this is where I'm trying to differentiate my channel from the others. If there's a problem with something, I will tell you. I'm not going to give any affiliate codes or any links or whatever until I believe this is sorted out. So stay tuned for that. Now, hi everyone, good evening. Welcome back to the channel. Now I'm here today to finish off the CRW wheel saga. Now, if you haven't seen the last video where I absolutely roasted these things in terms of QC and engineering, I'll leave a link to that in the description below or a card on the screen somewhere. But I fixed the QC issues, got some data out the wheels, I've done the aero test as you're gonna see in this video and can I recommend these wheels after all, well, let's find out. So if you don't know, quickly recapping about those QC issues, I found that the front axles were too loose inside the bearings and the axles are actually formed by the end caps on this front hub. And the upshot of that was the wheel was clunking under load. So if you got out the saddle and leaned the bike left to right, you could actually get this like pinging coming up through the hub, up through the fork, up into the handlebars and you could feel it. And I replicated that in a jig. Secondly, was the rear hub, when I came to test the rear wheel, I couldn't even get the rear disc on because the internal threads on the center lock were just way too tight. I couldn't even tighten it halfway down. Even with 40 newton meters, I couldn't bottom out the disc. So I fixed that now. Uh, Joe offered to actually send me a complete whole new wheel set, but I wanted to get through the testing. I wanted to do the error testing. So what I actually did is I got some cheap discs that come with the steel lock rings, which are actually a little bit shorter and they've got a bigger chamfer on, on the first thread. And basically I used one of those steel lock rings sacrificially and I reamed it in and out with some thread cutting compound until that thread loosened off. And now they're nice and loose. Now I can actually use the aluminium uh, lock ring on here if I want to. But Joe assures me, the curator, Joe, who was selling these on Panda Podium, he assures me that all those hubs now are going through QCs to make sure even the DT Swiss lock ring, the aluminium Shimano lock ring, the steel Shimano lock ring like I've got here, they all fit and the threads are you know nice and free running after anodizing and I suspect that they just became too tight after anodizing. Interestingly enough, the Shimano drawing uh, actually lists that thread in an imperial format whereas I think the DT Swiss drawings list the thread as a metric format. So there's a little bit of interference there with the tolerances, but whatever, they should fit any you know normal disc lock ring that you're going to use. So I've given them a good reaming, and I'm pretty sure all the QC issues are ironed out, because Joe, like I said, is the curator of these wheels. He is bringing them to the Western market, and he's a very upstanding guy. On the point of the end caps, if your end caps, when you receive these wheels, are less than 0.98 when you measure them with a micrometer or vernier or whatever, write to them and say, you know, can you send me some new end caps? Because like I proved in the last video, you do get that stick slipping on the axle if they're not a nice H6 fit. Now H6 should be 0.989. It's difficult for you to measure that without a proper micrometer down to like two microns or something. But anything less than 0.98, I believe you should ask for new end caps. I don't think there'll be a problem with that anymore because I believe they've got such a reaming off me that they fixed all the QC issues. So can I recommend these wheels? I think... Um, on paper, they are one of the best wheel sets out there in terms of the weight, the aerodynamics, as you've got quite a deep rim still, um, especially on the front wheel, still 50 mil deep or just over, and you've got 16 spokes on the front wheel. So my prediction was that the front wheel aerodynamics is going to be really good. And I've done the aero test now, and it's pretty gusty, as you can probably hear. So I wanted to test these against the Windspace Megas, but they were really fast aero-wise. So I wanted to get these on and test them back to back whilst we've got the same weather conditions. And believe it or not, you couldn't make this up. The, the Megas were my fastest on test so far, even faster than the 67s. Don't know why, maybe it's just better in slightly conditions. These have just gone a smidgen faster and I'll drop in some screenshots off the device now so you can see the CDA, the lap CDAs. I'm not making this up. This is the fastest wheel I've tested on the protocol. Pretty amazing actually, considering all the problems I've had with this wheel. The front wheel no longer makes any clicking noises because they sent me the, the better fitting end cap. Um, but yeah, fastest wheel on the test pretty cool like and noticeably more stable uh, because of the lack of spokes in the front wheel i think that really helps but yeah just a little update stay tuned for the mega test because um that was going super good those wheels are really impressive in terms of how they're built and they're the only wheel set i've ever had which don't squeal on the disc brakes in the wet and i think that's just because the spoke system is so stiff it doesn't go into resonance it's got a much higher resonant frequency and it's just harder to excite it so they are silent dry and wet now, what tyres would I recommend running on these? Well, I'm running a 28 on the front for the aerodynamic purposes because I think it matches the rim up really nicely on the front. And on the rear, I'm running normally a 32 or a 30. This is actually a 30, and you can see even a 30 Conti 5 KTR has a very, very, very nice transition. 
Another thing that I still recommend they do is throw in some nicer wheel bags because of the price of this wheel. It is pretty high compared to the other Chinese wheel sets. Um, a nice cloth wheel bag, something pretty simple, would be really nice. So if you're taking the wheels off and they're putting them in, the, in and out of the car, just to protect the, the really nice glossy UD finish. And I know I've said this before, the carbon spokes are very unlikely to break in normal use just under tensile loads, but it would be good to get some spares in the box. I can't imagine it costing them very much to throw in one or two spares or at least one of every length that you need for the whole wheel set would be really nice at this price point. <laughs> the company, CRW, have taken the roasting I gave them on board and I don't believe there'll be many of these QC issues going forward. So I can recommend them. Um, I'll leave a link down below. And I think Joe, even if you come from this video to say thanks for me to do this kind of free consulting, he's throwing in some free TPU tubes if you want to buy them, um, I don't know if that, I think you mentioned my name or something, um, I'll, I'll let you know. By the time this video goes live, mention my name or so, some sort of code, you'll get some free TPU tubes. Anyway, CRW, if you're watching, I hope you're really grateful for the free consulting that I did for you and fixing the end cap problem, because it did fix it. It's hard to deny the performance on paper, like the weight of them under 1300 grams for this depth of wheel set is very impressive. And they have held their own in the aero test. So. Hard to deny, they are a very fast wheel set, but not without their teething issues. But I hope you enjoyed that. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.